president of the Philippine JCs. So, my friends, let's welcome uh, Miro Kimbo. Thank you, uh, ma'am. I'm uh, originally from uh, Katbalog and Samar. I was born there, but uh, I grew up here in the city of Marikina, which uh, I fortunately am now the representative of the second district. Um, I'd like to just uh, keep uh, within the five minutes. Don't worry, ma'am. Anyway, we'll have the entire afternoon to answer the some of the points raised. But pagpupugay uh, po kay Dean Danilo Concepcion, ang pinagpipitagang uh, guro ko sa succession, uh, corporation law, may isa pa eh, pero mga 12 units yata yan eh. Uh, Dean Magaliona, and of course, the rest of the faculty are here. Uh, magandang hapon. Uh, it's been quite a while, like, um, since I've been here, the last time I was here. Um, very vivid. Uh, you always write your name in your blue book, and your student number you never forget, right? Uh, 8601391. That's now revealing my age. I entered the UP in 1986. I was only 13 years old. I'm kidding. Anyway. Um, you know, it, it's um, over the last uh, five weeks, it's been, a, um, in a sense, a very challenging and difficult time in Congress. In a sense that we are treading on grounds that is very unusual. Um, I, I, we take great exception to the fact that a statement is made to the effect that a, a majority or a small percentage of Congress can just foist the power of impeachment so easily because in the last uh, 20 years, it has so rarely been exercised. And in fact, it has really only succeeded three times uh, with President Era, with uh, Merceditas Gutierrez, and now with uh, the Chief Justice. So if you look at the process through which Congress resorts to this particular constitutional mandate, it has really been rare and very, very difficult. And you can, you can, I mean, if you go to Congress, it's very difficult to galvanize support. But never has Congress been so united uh, that uh, not only do we have one third, which is the requirement of the Constitution, but we have 188 members of Congress and 16 more who actually wanted to sign that verified uh, resolution and wanted to swear to that resolution, but the process had already been done. Now, we take great exception to the fact that we have always been, among all the branches of government, it has always been Congress that has been most respectful when it comes to the separation of powers. As far as we are concerned today, we see that while constantly it's being said that the, we have the judiciary that's actually the weakest and most passive, as practitioners, we all know it is actually the most powerful. When the power of impeachment is actually exercised, what we seek to simply do is to hold the impeachable officer accountable for his duty and his oath that he undertook when he actually uh, decided to serve the Filipino people. The, the justices of the court, particularly the chief justice, is so unique. It is so unique and so unlike any other uh, public officer. Ang Justice and Supreme Court, ang executive, pag kami magkamali, you have a resort. You go to the Supreme Court and seek for its uh, uh, reversal or have uh, some, some oppressive uh, law, have it declared unconstitutional. And time and again, the court has done that and we always embrace the decision of the court. When the president comes up with the, uh, an executive order that is likewise illegal or unconstitutional, we go to the Supreme Court. But when the Supreme Court decides in an oppressive manner, when the Supreme Court makes a difficult to accept mistake, when we see that we have a court that repeat, repetitively takes sides, protects a particular interest, what is the resort? These guys are justices, which we absolutely respect, stay in their position until they're 70. The other impeachable officers are so unique. Our president has, has a term of six years. Constitutional officers or uh, commission officers also have a term of six years. But justices of the Supreme Court stay there until they're 70. Our only, we can't even bring them to the ombudsman. Our only recourse is simply to file an impeachment case. So that's why it's been, in that respect, the court is so privileged. It is so because the law expects members of the bench 
to perform themselves, conduct themselves in a behavior that is absolutely beyond reproach. We give them that privilege. We give them that absolute strength and independence that we cannot so easily remove them, yet at the same time we expect them to be independent. In the Constitution, only members of the Supreme Court are... Uh, um, you only find in the Constitution a description of the behavior that members of the court uh, will actually have to do. Competence, integrity, uh, probity, and independence. You don't see a description of how the president should behave. You don't see a description of how members of the legislat legislature should behave. Precisely because there is so much, uh, the burden on the part of the members of the Supreme Court is so heavy. And that is the reason why we undertake the, this particular impeachment. We have seen that the Chief Justice, Chief Justice Corona, from the time, or even before he was appointed as uh, an Associate Justice, we see a very concrete pattern where the expectation in terms of independence and probity has gone and is totally out of the window. We will show that at the impeachment. We don't want to discuss the, the actual merits of the, the impeachment complaint because we will be accused again of telegraphing and revealing to the public. But I think what is important is that it's painful for many of us, even um, members of the bar who are also members of Congress. It is difficult. It is a painful process that we feel like we are going through right now, but it is a necessary process. It is necessary because as far as we are concerned, this will only further strengthen the court. We have a court today whether people admit it or not. I was in practice. It is a court where the people's trust have practically disappeared. As practitioners, we see it on a daily basis how decisions are actually rendered uh, without, and we will show that. We will show that particularly with the Chief Justice. And we feel like that at this point in time, it is time for the people's trust to be regained. Because it is only then, the stability of our democracy is entirely dependent on a trustworthy court. You can have a distrusted president. He goes in six years. You can have a distrusted Congress. They can be unelected in three years. Or senators who can be removed in six years' time. Or even brought to the ombudsman and be convicted. But as far as the court is concerned, they are there practically until they retire. So necessarily, we have to hold them to a particular behavior expected by our people. Lastly, I think is that when you talk to the ordinary person, pag tinatanong natin sila, pag pinag-usapan, sa kanila, simple lang yung pinag-uusapan. Ang korte, pag nagdi-desisyon dyan, para kang tumutulay sa alambre. Hindi mo alam kung paano magdi-desisyon. Dinideprive ang isang bahay, pinag-aawayan ng magkapatid, pinag-aawayan kung dapat bang ikulong ang isang tao o hindi. Tumutulay ka sa alambre, pero umaasa ka na kapag mag ng korte, kaliwa ang kanan ng bagsak mo, tinatanggap mo yan dahil naniniwala ka na ang nagdi desisyon ay may integridad, may independence, may probity, at may competence. Yan ang esensya sa stability ng ating judicial system. And we feel like and we are convinced, and we hope to be able to convince the 16 other senators that as far as the Chief Justice is concerned, he no longer has the moral timber to stand and to be the representative of our judicial system. Uh, maraming salamat po at uh, magandang hapon po.